Right, we are rolling. We are with the Isley Brothers, and this is such an honor to be here. And we are at Electric Ladyland Studios in New York. So the first question's got to be, because this is something you talked about, they have a new album out with Carlos Santana and his wife, Cindy Blackman. And they were just mentioning this, that there was an unknown guitar player that lived in your house for a couple of years and played in your band for about six months. How did that happen? Wow, we needed a guitar player and I was introduced to him and uh, we became one of the great friendships. But where did, where, where did you meet? Uh, New York. New York. Uh, I think 125th Street. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to get that specific. Right there. But, so really, I know this is a, a repetitive, but did you have any idea that this guy's legend would still be talking about it 52, 55 years later? I, I knew he was the great, greatest guitar player we had at the time, and uh, the rest is history. Guitar players, what did you think? You were 11 years old when you... Uh, when I heard him uh, play, Yeah. Uh, they got him his first uh, Fender guitar, my brothers did. So he's left and he plays it like this. When I heard him play, I had not heard of all the guitar players that I'd heard, you know, although I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. never heard anybody play a guitar like that before. Uh, and he had uh, a lot of stage presence and um, um, charisma. Yeah. He played, and he just played very well. And, uh, extraordinarily well. So you could tell. First I could tell that he was a great player. The rest of that stuff, uh, when Ed Sullivan had the Beatles on his show for the first time, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting on the couch on the left side, and my younger brother Marvin sitting on the right side, and Jimmy Hendrix is sitting in the middle, when Ed Sullivan said, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles, there was no clap of thunder above our house. You do not know the future. You cannot see the future. <laughs> And a few days later, my eldest brother Kelly had a meeting with the, all the members of the band and the brothers, and he said, you know, amongst other things, um, this English band has changed everything. And I think we're going to be all right because I understand they do shout and twist and shout, which they did. And uh, he said, I don't know what's going to happen, I mean, even for Elvis, but I think we're going to be all right. Now, they got two guitar players, but we got Jimmy. And when he said... But we got Jimmy. I looked over at Jimmy, and Jimmy was grinning ear to ear at that <laughs> remark. You know, now, of course, for things that have gone over time, like they've gone, like uh, Marvin and I grew up to be musicians. Jimmy grew up to be his electric guitar icon. Hello? And we're in the, on a record with Carlos Santana. You know, any other time you roll the dice again, and it would have been Isley. Carlos and Hendrix on the same record. Now, did I get that c clear? You were sitting watching the Beatles and Ed Sullivan the first with time. Jimi Hendrix? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they did Twist and Shout. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What did you think? That's I our thought, song. I thought they'd do an Isley Brothers song. That's what they, my, <laughs> my friends on the playground said, you know, Ernie, uh, the Beatles took your brother's song. I said, no, they didn't take it. They just been listening. <laughs> <laughs> And they liked what they heard, and I'm glad they did it. Now, you know? did you ever hear, uh, talk to John Lennon when he was alive, or have uh, you ever Paul, talked to Paul McCartney about that? Paul, uh, in uh, upstate New York a few years ago, and uh, I went up to him and tapped him on his uh, shoulder, and he uh, stood up and gave me a bear hug. It almost put me out of commission. And both of us are talking at the same time. And I said, Paul, you and George and Ringo and John, you guys are just wonderful. And he said, Ernie, if it were not for the Isley Brothers, the Beatles would still be in Liverpool. Yeah. Did you also know that uh, the version that they did of Twist and Shout was like, the, they had they'd been there all day, they had time for one last song, and they decided to do that yeah, because they like had that. always played that live, which is the same story <laughs> I heard you tell. Yeah, well, well you know, you know, they were imitating the I.C. Brothers in uh, Liverpool before they did a record. Right. You know, they were, they, they, they two big, biggest songs on their show was Shout and Twist and Shout, you know. We went to uh, England and auditioned uh, our keyboard player was Elton John. I could spend an hour or two with you guys. <laughs> Pretty good, you know. Yeah. Elton auditioned for you? Audition for us, and so we say, hey, you turned him down. Yeah, <laughs> you know what the shit. 
Does he know? Yeah. At the Shea Stadium show for the Beatles, the first song was Twist and Shout. Stop the show. That's right. That was their song. Awesome. Awesome. Well, awesome. You know, we got we to gotta roll. It's been a pleasure okay. to meet you. Right. This is a legendary Thank day you. for me. Thank you. Lecture